Now, where did I learn this? Calorie density has been around ever since food has been around. And as a matter of fact, most of the plant-based doctors use this to teach their programs. I actually had two unread yet best-selling books on my bookshelf before I learned this. In 1980, Dr. Dean Ornish, the first person who successfully reversed heart disease with a low-fat plant-based diet, wrote a book called Eat More, Weigh Less. And when you understand the principles of calorie density and apply them to your diet, you really can eat more and weigh less. As a matter of fact, when you understand calorie density, you can literally take in twice as much food and yet consume half as many calories. In 1985, Dr. John McDougall, one of my heroes, wrote another best-selling book, which I believe is still a bestseller today, called The McDougall Program for Maximum Weight Loss, which also employs the principle of calorie density. But it wasn't until I picked up this book that I really understood it. About five years ago, I wandered into a $1 bookstore in Burbank, California, after seeing a movie, and I picked up this book called Volumetrics by Dr. Barbara Rolls. Dr. Rolls has done more research in the field of calorie density than anyone else, and I had the privilege of interviewing her on my teleclass. I think the reason this book resonated so much with me is because I'm a visual learner and it had a lot of pictures. For example, on the cover, you can see that for the same amount of calories in a large bowl of minestrone soup, you could have just the tiniest, tiniest cheeseburger. I remember reading in her book that for the same amount of calories in a quarter cup of raisins, which I would easily throw on my oatmeal, I could have two cups of grapes. And if you like pictures, there's going to be a lot of them at the end of this presentation that hopefully will cement this teaching in your brain like this book did for me. But what Barbara Rolls discovered in her laboratory at Penn State University, where she studies human eating behavior, is that all human beings eat the same amount of food per day. Now, that doesn't mean that I eat the same amount as a vegan bodybuilder like Robert Cheek or an Olympic athlete, but each of us here eats roughly the same amount of food every day. And for most people, that's about three to five pounds of food. So if you want to keep eating the same amount of food that you're used to eating, and perhaps even more food, you simply have to change the calorie density of the food you eat. If you do that by about 500 calories a day, you could easily lose a pound a week safely, sustainably, and deliciously. What Dr. Rolls also discovered is that feeling full, satiety, the end of hunger, is not just a result of the amount of calories in the food, but by the weight and the volume of the food. And believe it or not, satiety actually starts with your eyes. So when you see a full plate of food, you know you're going to be satisfied. And I hope that some of you will eat with me this weekend so you can really see how much food I eat now. Because as a slender person, I eat way more than I ever did when I was obese. And I estimate that I probably eat between 7 and 10 pounds of food now. And it's fun because I get to eat all day. <laughs> so let's create a calorie density chart. Now, please feel free to take notes, but we do sell these little magnets with everything I'm going to say, so that makes it easy. Green means go, and these are the healthiest foods on the planet, and they're also the foods lowest in calorie density. Red means stop, and these are, in my opinion, and many of the other experts, the most unhealthy foods on the planet. And purple, which is my favorite color, these foods are healthy, but they're just very calorically dense. So foods range in calorie density from about 100 calories per pound to about 4,000 calories per pound. That's a 40-fold difference, and that's going to make a big difference if you're trying to lose weight. Any guesses on what food or food group might have 100 calories per pound? I'm hearing greens, kale, exactly. The truth is it's any non-starchy vegetable, which is pretty much every vegetable you can think of, with the exception of potatoes, corns, and beans. Beans aren't a vegetable. Potatoes, corn, yeah, potatoes and corn. And peas, not beans. Well, peas are a legume, as are beans. So here's a picture of some of the non-starchy vegetables. And if you look at some of those, some of those are botanically actually fruit. So things like zucchini, bell pepper, cucumber, okra, tomato, and eggplant, botanically they're fruit. We think of them as non-starchy vegetables. These have only 67 calories per pound. If you were to Google non-starchy vegetables, you'd get a list like this. So you could literally eat a different one every day without repeating. Americans eat less than 10% of their calories from fruits and vegetables, and over 92% of their calories from animal products and processed food. So the number one secret to ultimate weight loss is to eat vegetables. 
At 100 calories per pound or less for some of them, you simply cannot overeat on them. We have what's known as a BMR, a basal metabolic rate, and what that means is the amount of calories we expend at rest. So even if we were laying in a bed doing nothing, we still need a certain amount of calories to breathe our lungs and beat our heart. That's known as our BMR. If you take your weight and multiply it by 10, that would be your basal metabolic rate. So let's say you weigh 150 pounds. You would need at least 1,500 calories just to maintain your weight. How many people here think that they could eat 15 pounds of vegetables a day? I eat between four and six, and I'm eating all day. Even diet styles I don't agree with, like paleo and the zone, they'll tell you these are unlimited. You can eat as many of these as you want because they're mostly water and fiber and nutrients. You know, you actually expend more calories chewing non-starchy vegetables and digesting them than in the calories. So that is really the biggest secret, is to increase your consumption of vegetables. If you look at cultures around the world that are leaner than Americans, for example, the Asians who have only a 3% obesity rate, this is a culture of people that traditionally eat vegetables. The more vegetables you eat, the leaner you'll be. We know that from a landmark study done at Tufts University, which showed that the more servings of fruits and vegetables, particularly vegetables that a person eats, consistently lower BMI and body weight. The idea of eating vegetables is really taking hold in this country, because even Conan O'Brien has said that for the first time since 2007, the USDA has finally approved a device to treat obesity. This amazing breakthrough is called a vegetable. It's true. It's true. One problem with eating vegetables is when you do go to your doctor, she'll probably say something like this, stop eating so many vegetables, I can't seem to find anything wrong with you. Because as luck would have it, the most calorie dilute food, the food that is lowest in calorie density, is also the food that's highest in nutrient density. Somebody posted this on my Facebook page once and it said no one has ever gotten fat by eating too much kale. And it's true, but I don't want you to be juicing and blending it, which I'll explain why in a minute. The food next time, calorie density, and again, I'm rounding up 300 calories a pound. It's really more like 200 for most of them. Any guesses what might be next? You can, you can talk. You don't be shy. Fruit. Absolutely, absolutely right. It's fruit. I showed you that there's about six fruits that are considered non-starchy vegetables. They're actually 67 calories a pound. Most fruit, apples, berries, are about 200 calories a pound. But to compensate for those that are very high in sugar and lower in water, like bananas, we're rounding up to 300 calories a pound. So that's fruit. If you're familiar with my story, I have a book called Unprocessed. I was a severe sugar addict for the first 43 years of my life. I started every day with a Coke Slurpee and eight pumps of vanilla syrup, Dr. Pepper, big gulps for lunch. I did not eat any fruits or vegetables until I was 43 years old when I got the diagnosis of pre-colon cancer. Then that's all I started eating. I never ate fruit because it wasn't sweet enough. And if I did have to eat fruit, I'd have to put tons of sugar on it. But when I look at a slide like that now, I practically salivate because fruit is nature's candy. And when you're not eating crap like sugar, it actually tastes pretty darn good. But why do we want you to eat your whole food whole instead of juiced and blended? I'm going to explain that right now. So these two glass jars are the same size. And we're putting in different varieties of apples in that. And I'm going to show you the difference. Now, your actual stomach is about the size of a cantaloupe. It holds about a liter of food, being about 4.22 cups. These jars are much bigger. On the left, I have 500 calories worth of apples. So what I did is I went to the store, I weighed out two and a half pounds of apples. And that was about six apples. It would be between five and eight, depending on the size of, an app of the apple. They're about 200 calories a pound. So the jar on the left has 500 calories of apples. I don't know about you, but I tried to eat six apples in one sitting, and after two, I was full. But what happens when you take 500 calories of whole apples and juice them? Well, you get about three cups of apple juice, which is pretty easy to eat. The other problem with juice is it raises your blood sugar much more quickly than the whole food. And when you raise your blood sugar more quickly, you're raising your insulin more quickly, insulin the hormone being responsible for driving fat into the cells. But the biggest problem here with juicing is what is missing. What's missing from the juice that's in the whole apple? 
the fiber and the pulp. And that is the second secret to ultimate weight loss, is to make sure that everything you eat has both the fiber and the pulp intact. Now, fiber is important to every bodily process. It helps prevent disease, it helps prevent certain cancers and flush out toxins. But for weight loss, it's super important because when you have fiber in the food with the water, fiber plus water creates bulk. And bulk is what creates satiety, which allows you to feel full on fewer calories. It's very easy to drink that much apple juice, but for most people, it would be nearly impossible to eat that many apples. Mm -hmm.